president says that uh, you know Warren Buffett should pay the same amount in taxes as his secretary. Uh, but Liz's point is that really it's small businesses that are also going to be hit by this. I mean, do you agree? Well, uh, Representative Paul Ryan said it best. He says if you tax something more, you get less of it. I mean, the simple fact is you look at my organization with about 50 employees. If you start taking more money out of my pocket, I'm not going to expand. I'm not going to put money back into my business because it's going to hurt my personal income. Liz, you made a perfectly valid point. If you give people incentives to create jobs and then you take it away from them on the other side when you tax them personally, it makes no difference at all. And yeah. that's what's and, happening right now. And you know what kills me? I mean, Warren Buffett makes this big showy thing about taxing the rich. But let me tell you something. He purposely set up his business in 1956 as a partnership, meaning that he would get hit with the personally and other investors with the losses first from making risky bets. What about stopping the government from making risky bets with your tax dollars and losing money, losing your tax dollars? Where does that fit into the equation what Warren Buffett is talking about when, again, he only pays himself a hundred grand a year, gets arrested and unrealized capital gains, and he lowers his tax bill by making donations to things like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. He lowers his estate tax. You never hear him talk about taxable income when he makes these arguments. He, 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 rather, he only talks about taxable income. He doesn't talk about adjusted gross income and what happens with that income when it's hit by taxes. And by the way, you know, this is an AMT. Is it going to be indexed to inflation? <laughs> this was an AMT that was discussed yeah. in 1969 that's now hitting more middle class people because it's not indexed to inflation. Yeah, I mean, again, I mean, there is, there is, spend, there is talk about uh, cuts in spending, but it's also tax increases in a rough economy. But we know what many of the top economists say about that. Liz, thank you. Sure. Uh, well, it was the failure heard around the world, and especially in Washington, Solyndra's bankruptcy costing taxpayers millions. But coming up, we're joined by somebody who says alternatives are the future. And coming up next, we're going to go behind today's numbers, build our confidence coming in stagnant. We have an exclusive interview with the CEO of the National Home Builders Association, Jerry Howard. He says there are bigger problems than confidence. He's going to explain next. Here's a quick Fox Business Market Check for you. Take a look at shares of Lennar right now. The stock is uh, up just slightly. Uh, the home builder's earnings uh, did meet expectations. Slowing delivery of homes and its third quarter profit down 31%. But the company said demand is picking up somewhat, driven by low home prices and all-time low interest rate. The stock up 60 cents right now, 1440. But look at that one-year chart of Lennar. And more news that builders are still facing challenges. The NEHB's monthly builder confidence survey for September showed a bleak picture for home builders as housing continues to take a hit from the weak economy. Joining me now from Washington, D.C. in an exclusive interview is Jerry Howard. He is the CEO of the National Association of Home Builders. And Jerry, so many questions for you. But first, you still maintain that the home builders, part of their confidence problems is lack of access to credit. Uh, what can be done to change that? Well, the first thing that can be done is for uh, banks and, I guess more importantly, bank regulators to acknowledge that there is no national housing market, that there are a series of housing markets locally driven all over the country. And NAHB just last week announced for the first time our Improving Markets Index, which shows that in many small and medium-sized markets around this country, housing is in demand. And just as failure begets failure, success begets success. If we start feeding capital into the markets where it's needed, 
that success will, will feed upon itself and grow. Okay. Until regulators start saying housing is not a national commodity, but a series of local markets, I think we'll continue in this malaise. Real quick, you're, you're bringing up the financials and you're talking about the credit issue. I do want to take that to Liz McDonald really quick and, and bring you into this because the banks are not lending. These guys are saying they need that. What's happening? You know, what's happening is they've got a blacksmith anvils around their neck. Bank of America certainly with lawsuits because mm -hmm. of foreclosure, robo-signing problems, a settlement with the private investors, and and the settlement with the state's attorney general. But the gentleman makes an important point, Cheryl, that it needs to be addressed as a local issue, not a national issue where you just toss federal money into the system. And that's the way it needs to be addressed. I okay. think he's right. Well, besides the banks that we need to watch on this one, we do need to look at the home builders. We are, uh, Jerry, showing uh, our uh, viewers uh, how those stocks are faring. And these stocks have not been faring very well for the last uh, two to three years. Still, the sentiment today seems to be a small change to the upside. Does that improve in the next couple of months in your opinion? I think we're going to stay pretty much where we are right now. We've been uh, bouncing around the same levels uh, for a long time now and until our policymakers, until somebody recognizes that the way to improve upon America's asset base is to improve upon the asset base of individual Americans, that's their homes. Fix the housing problem and the economy will follow. It's been true in every recession since World War II. And a big piece of this is jobs, Jerry. And I do want to show our viewers uh, a, a map of the United States to kind of show uh, where we are seeing. Okay, this is your May survey uh, and, and kind of the, 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 the breakdown by region. I think this is crucial to show uh, because, like, if you look at, in particular, the Northeast, I mean, there's where you still have a lot of pressure. And that's where, and I want to bring Rob Bass into this, that's where we have a real lack of jobs right now is the Northeast. Populous area, low jobs. Hurting the home builders. Uh, Jerry, it's Rob Basso. I have a question for you. What would you tell a home buyer that's out there looking for their first home or even to get rid of their initial home and get into a, another home? Has it reached bottom? Has the housing market reached bottom? I think people are very scared about going out and purchasing right now because they don't think it has hit bottom. Well, again, this, these are localized decisions. In some markets, it's past bottom. And if you're a consumer in those areas, you need to get on, uh, on the bandwagon right away and buy your house. In other markets, you need to evaluate it and make a decision locally. But those decisions are made by consumers at a local level. They should be made by banks at a local level. And federal regulators need to realize that. You know, Jerry, th we're talking about single-family homes in particular. But I think what is so fascinating to our viewers and I think is tough to understand is that you do have interest rates that many say are going to be low for the next year to two years. Do you think we're going to stay in this incredibly low interest rate environment, just above 4 percent right now? And if so, when does that help the home builders? I think we'll stay in this interest rate environment for, for the near future, yes, absolutely. When will it help home builders? When other elements of the financing stream are, are stabilized uh, and when uh, somebody stands up and says housing is part of our economic fabric and part of our social fabric we are not going to do any further harm. Jerry Howard the National Association of Home Builders president and CEO joining us for an exclusive interview. Jerry thank you very much for commenting on today's data we hope it improves. Thanks for having me I do too. Well, after a uh, big meeting over the weekend, it looks like not only is Germany back in a way, but Greece is not keeping their word. Coming up, Kay Stockton of NKM Partners has some ideas of what to buy right now for you and also what you need to avoid. That is next on Fox Business, giving you the power to prosper. Dow down 208 points right now.